I'm Chef Nikki with the Treehouse Kitchen in Encinitas, and today we are going to make financiers. Financiers are a sweet uh, treat. Um, they were originally developed in France in the financial district, hence the name financier, uh, to give the bankers a little bit of something for their lunch break, something sweet or to have with tea. Today we are going to be using a large deep vessel pan. Uh, this is a bunt pan and you can make these in a muffin tin or even little mini muffins so you have um, just bite sized pieces. The first thing you want to do when you're making your financiers is to grease the pan. Now I like to melt butter just enough to make it soft, not quite liquidy. I chill the pan before I brush it. You want to make sure you get into every little crevice. This is going to ensure that you have the really cool looking design of the pan. Again, if you're using just a muffin tin, you can do this the same way. You don't have to be as precise in making sure you get into every little cr crack of the vessel. But this will make a really beautiful little cake. Ensuring that your pan is cold before you put the butter in will make sure that the butter doesn't just drip down the sides. It's immediately firming up against the edges of the pan. One of the tricks to making the financiers really delicious is to melt the butter into what's called a noisette. Noisette is when your butter turns brown and it starts to smell like nuts. The word noisette is actually French for hazelnut. So we're gonna put the butter into the pan and we're gonna melt it down. Once the butter starts to boil and bubble up, you want to keep your eye on it and not walk away because it won't take long before it actually hits noisette and it could burn very, very quickly. You can see the sides of the pan are starting to form brown spots on the edges. You want to just stir those in. And we're starting to get that aroma, that nutty aroma. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm going to turn the heat off to check it because you can see much better once those bubbles calm down, the little brown bits. We're gonna put this aside to cool for now. You don't wanna add this hot mix to the batter. You wanna wait for it to cool down to a room temperature. But if you can see, that we have this nice browning right there. Smells delicious. Okay, so now we're going to prepare the rest of the ingredients for our financiers. We have powdered sugar, cake flour. It's really important to use cake flour for this instead of an all-purpose flour. Cake flour is a lot lighter. Um, it will make them less dense and a lot fluffier. We're gonna separate eggs. We're just gonna use the whites for this recipe. We have vanilla extract. We have some chopped strawberries that we diced. Uh, this is just salt. This is for our garnish. We're gonna have some powdered sugar. We're gonna take the zest of this beautiful lemon. We have almond flour, and then we have granulated sugar. So let's prepare the ingredients. Uh, first, what we're gonna do is separate the eggs. Now, 
Eggs are easiest to separate when they're cold, but in baking, a lot of times you really want to use a warm egg or a room temperature um, egg. It's because the surface tension of the egg is increased as, as it is colder, so it's harder to mix. So we're gonna separate the eggs. I have three bowls lined up. We're gonna crack the egg. I'm gonna open one end, let it fall in my hand, and then there we go. Next, we're gonna zest the lemon. Now, when you're zesting a lemon, a microplane is a great tool to use. You can also use a vegetable peeler, but then you'll have to chop it up very fine. So this does it all in one shot. So when you're, when you're zesting, you wanna hold your citrus still and pull the zester towards you. You don't want to go over this white part. Uh, that's pith and it's very bitter. What we're looking for is just the oils from the zest. So we're just gonna keep turning it. And the zester only works in one direction. So going back and forth uh, can actually damage the blades and it's inefficient. That looks good. Well, I like a lot of lemons, so we'll add a little extra. Okay, so now we have everything prepared to start making the dough of the financier. First, we're gonna take our powdered sugar and we're gonna sift it with our cake flour. This will help incorporate the two flours and also will take out any type of lumps that we have from moisture in the flour and the sugar. Next, we're gonna add our almond flour. our granulated sugar, and a pinch of salt. We're gonna whisk this all together. going to put in our lemon zest. Our egg whites. And our vanilla. We're gonna mix it all up gonna get it all mixed up so it's nice homogeneous batter and you really want to mix it until you can't see the egg whites anymore so it looks like one solid mix making sure you scrape down from the bottom up so you get all of the dry ingredients incorporated Last, what we're going to do is fold in our strawberries. Now you can use any kind of fruit for this. I like berries. You can use blueberries, uh, raspberries. If you're going to use a fruit that needs to be cut, you wanna make sure that you dice it fairly small so that you can get a bite of the berry in every bite that you take of the cake. Once you have the uh, strawberries all folded in, now it's time to add our noisette butter. See how nice and brown those milk solids have gotten? And 
now we're just going to fold that in. You really want to keep mixing this until you do not see any more of the butter and it just looks like one nice homogenous mix. Beautiful. And now we're going to fill the vessels of our cake pan. We're going to go about three quarters of the way up the vessel. We want to allow some room for them to grow, to rise a little bit. With the steam from the egg whites, it will cause them to puff up just a little bit. to 30 minutes. How you want to tell if they're ready, when you push down on them, if they spring back and you don't make a fingerprint, then they're ready to go. Okay, so they've been in there about 25 minutes now, and we're going to test them. Oh, they're very nice. And when you push down and it springs back and doesn't leave an imprint, then they're ready to go. We'll let them cool for about three to five minutes and then we'll take them out of the pan. So they're still warm. They're gonna be easiest to get out of the pan while they're a little warm. Plus, if you let them cool too long in the pan, you could dry them out a little bit. So I'm just gonna give them a little, just a little loosening with a small palette knife. They smell delicious, okay? We'll just flip them over. Ta-da! At this point, you can let them cool off a little bit, uh, and then you can dust them with their powdered sugar. You can also make a frosting for these. If you take some lemon juice or some milk and mix it with your powdered sugar, you can do a nice frosting if you want them a little bit sweeter. And there you go. 